Starting another kitchen remodel job and we get to do some really cool stuff on this one. So I decided to make a few different videos on it and this first one is extending these upper cabinets with a second row of cabinets with frosted glass doors and then finished off with crown molding around the top and it ends up being such a drastic transformation. But in typical cabinet job fashion it starts with breaking down a bunch of plywood, bouncing between the table saw and track saw to get all the parts cut down to size. When it comes to sizing on these, I'm simply trying to match the original cabinets that each one will be sitting on exactly. So ideally, all I have to do is set them in place and get them screwed in. With all the parts cut to size, next I switched over to a dado stack to cut grooves in all the side panels that the top and bottom panels will slide into. This is not only good in strong joinery, but it makes alignment and assembly much smoother. Once the two horizontal grooves were cut in all the side panels, next I ran each piece through to create a rabbit on the inside back edge for the full half inch back panel to sit inside. At this point I decided to go ahead and completely prime and paint the insides of each piece before assembly. I wouldn't normally paint the inside of a cabinet, but since these have glass doors, it'd look much better if they were. But also, painting the inside of cabinet boxes is just a pain in general, let alone boxes this small, so much easier to get it done now. After they were all dry, it was assembly time. And since I cut all those dados and then just used a roller to apply the paint, I still have the clean grooves so I can glue the pieces together, and the glue is still actually able to bond to the raw wood. And as I'm editing this, I realize I must have completely forgot to film drilling a couple pocket holes on the top and bottom panels where they won't be seen in the final product. These will be to help attach the face frame and the back panel, but also just to ensure those panels can't sag over time. Next up was going through the milling process with all the red oak for the face frames. And just a quick explanation on why I'm using red oak even though these will be finished white, and it's simply to match the existing cabinets. Oak has a lot of open pores and really pronounced grain patterns even when painted. So when refinishing oak, it all comes down to personal preference. I had made an oak door sample and on half of it I filled all the grain in to show the client how smooth they could be but in this case, she actually liked and chose keeping the wood grain, which ultimately is a lot less work, therefore cheaper for me to do as well. But again, all just personal preference. Once all the parts were milled and cut down to final size, next I drilled pocket holes on the backs to get them joined together.
Just a quick design note here, you can see I made the top rails a little wider than the rest, and this gives me a higher, built-in nailer for the crown molding, so when I nail the crown on, I still have the same reveal showing on the face frame on all four sides. I'm just a big fan of symmetry, and this is one of those custom touches that you can plan for. Anyways, next up was getting the face frames attached to the boxes with glue, just a couple brad nails since the holes can be filled, and those pocket screws on the top and bottom. I decided to go ahead and get the faces primed as well, just to make it easier and save me a little work on site. And with the open grain of the oak, it's actually nice to just use a roller for the primer to really work it into those pores easier versus spraying. And then I can still sand it back smooth for a good finish. Next up was more milling for all the door parts, but since I already showed you that process, we'll go ahead and breeze through that here. For the joinery on these, I'm using this glass panel cabinet door bit set from Freud. And it's a really cool set that cuts the rabbet for the glass to sit in, but also another groove that some bead molding slides into to hold the glass in place. You'll see more on that towards the end of the video, but it's a really nice way to make these. I'll link these down below in the video description, along with everything else you see me using throughout the video if you want to check anything out more. But step one with these bits is running every piece through face down to make the grooves on the inside edges. And then once all the grooves were cut, next you swap over to the other bit to cut the tongues on both ends of all the rails, which are the horizontal pieces. Now it's just a matter of adding glue to the tongues and clamping them up to dry. I did do some modifying to the existing cabinets on that shorter wall section, so I figured I'd better throw that in here too to spare you all from wondering about that. I just needed to cut a couple of them down so they were all the same, and then I made one of those lattice wine rack things and a shelf for the center cabinet. And back to what this video is about, to install the upper boxes, I just simply put some used bubble gum in between the cabinets and set them on top. Or went entirely overkill, screwing all the new cabinet face frames together, then up into the new ones from the bottom, and into the studs in the wall as well, through the flange in the back. Moving on to the crown molding. I don't want to just gloss over this, but I also couldn't make this an hour long video about installing crown molding, which I definitely plan on doing at some point. But just quickly, I like to cut my crown in what's called a nested position. And this makes it to where you only have to worry about adjusting the miter degree versus laying the crown flat on the saw and doing compound cuts where you have to keep adjusting both the bevel of the saw head and the miter. And then on smaller sections like for kitchen cabinets, I like to go ahead and pre-assemble as much as I can handle down on the ground by gluing and clamping with these Collins miter clamps. I'm using tight bond speed set glue here, which dries really quick and result in some nice tight miters that won't come apart.
The next piece of molding is this little strip that goes between the two rows of cabinets. I think I made this 3 quarters of an inch wide and about 5 16 thick. This of course hides that seam and any unevenness between the two cabinets, but also just adds another layer and shadow line detail. I completely miss getting some up close shots of this here, but you can see it better in the final beauty shots at the end. And that wraps up installation of the actual boxes, so back to the shop to finish up all the doors. The next thing I needed to do was route this door lip detail on the front edges. Again, this is all to match the existing doors. Then the top and bottom of the doors get this 30 degree back bevel. I'm adding new hardware to the whole kitchen, but originally these would be for finger grabs. But since we're going all white now, you don't want grimy fingers touching and having to open the doors. Hence the new hardware throughout. And speaking of hardware, next up was getting those holes for the knobs drilled along with all the hinge cups on the back side. And finally, I could get everything sprayed. First with shellac primer, then a water-based white lacquer for the top coat. Sanding in between every coat with 320 grit, vacuuming off all the dust, and wiping down with a damp rag before the next coat. Now I'm also degreasing, sanding, and spraying the 45 other door and drawers from the kitchen at this point. So it's another case of, holy cow, that's a lot of work, trimmed down to just a few seconds here in the video. On to getting the glass installed. As you can see, it just plops right in there nicely on that rabbit, and then this glass bead retainer molding presses into that groove. It's a super snug fit and holds the glass great with no rattling or anything whatsoever. Like I said earlier, just a really nice way to make glass doors. All that's left to do is get them installed, make any adjustments with the hinges, and get the knobs put on. What a huge transformation these cabinets alone make, but make sure you get subscribed for the other videos I'll have coming on this kitchen. I really appreciate you all watching and giving the video a thumbs up. Until next time. Take care.